Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Alicia D. Bernardo. She's joining us here as Global Head of Medical Affairs Neuroscience at Janssen to discuss the presentation at the 2021 Ectrams Virtual Congress concerning Panvori. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. D. Bernardo. It's great to be here, Neil. Thank you so much. Well, as Global Head of Medical Affairs, uh, Neuroscience at Janssen, give us a brief look into your area of expertise and uh, talk briefly about your role as uh, head of that department. Yeah, so uh, I'm a neurologist by training, uh, Neil. I did my uh, training in uh, Boston in uh, MS, and things have changed uh, since I left practice. Um, And currently, I oversee the entire neurology and uh, neuropsychiatry portfolio for Janssen. Uh, We're actually very, um, we're very committed to this space. Uh, We have um, a a legacy in neuroscience and we're really, really excited about bringing forward a new treatment for multiple sclerosis. Well, give us a brief overview of uh, multiple sclerosis or uh, as many know it as MS and more specifically how Panvori works for MS patients. Mm, Yeah, great question. So multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease um, in which the immune system, which is beautifully designed in normal times to protect us from things that shouldn't be in our body like viruses or cancer cells, when that system gets confused and starts attacking or destroying parts of, of our bodies, um, the very thing it's meant to protect. Um, a familiar example of an autoimmune disease is uh, eczema. Um, or psoriasis, uh, when a confused immune system attacks the skin. In MS, uh, the immune system actually attacks cells in the brain and spinal cord, causing damage to those cells. They're called oligodendrocytes. Um, But also really important, they cause damage to neurons. Uh, That's significant because while the um, oligodendrocytes grow back, neurons don't. Um, So we have really come to understand multiple sclerosis or MS as an immune-mediated neurodegenerative disease because when the disease progresses, it destroys neurons in the brain and spinal cord, which can't grow back. Um, And unfortunately, MS tends to develop in young people and people in the prime of their lives. Um, So effective long-term treatment is really critical, uh, which kind of leads me to your second point about uh, Ponvori. So Panvori offers patients living with MS the option for a highly effective drug um, in a convenient oral form. It's not an injection or an infusion. That's easy to start. And this may sound strange, uh, what I'm going to say next, but also easy to stop. Um, And that's because it has a very short half-life. The drug is is gone from the patient's system within one week, and the patient has a fully reconstituted circulating immune system um, within one week. That's important because um, uh, well, that's, that's useful in, for instance, a pandemic or for vaccination mm-hmm. um, or even not during a pandemic for unplanned pregnancies or uh, planned pregnancies. Um, unlike, um, you know, and this is significant because unlike many other drugs, uh, Panvori does not have to destroy any part of the immune system for its benefit. It's a cell trafficking inhibitor, uh, which means it really just tucks the immune cells, in this case B cells and T cells, into lymph nodes so that they can't travel and go do damage um, in the brain and spinal cord. Um, and unlike other um, uh, cell trafficking inhibitors in this class, it has this really nice um, short half-life. So that's, and, and it also has, is the only um, oral therapy which is a really convenient option for patients, the only oral therapy that has um, head-to-head data against um, another oral, uh, which is terafunamide or obagio. Um, and that's, um, that's significant because that's a very frequently used uh, and in some parts of the world the, the most frequently prescribed um, oral therapy. So we're the ones that actually um, took on, took on um, obagio in, this, in head-to-head data. The 2021 European Committee for Treatment and Research in Multiple Sclerosis, there was some information presented there concerning Panvori. Who were the candidates that were chosen for the Panvori study and why were they chosen? The patients that we um, chose were patients who actually um, were, um, you know, had a certain, had a certain, um, 
certainty about their diagnosis, first of all. Uh, they also um, had symptoms of, you know, signs of uh, act disease activity. Um, so we didn't want to enroll patients whose diagnosis was still uncertain. So these were really confirmed uh, patients, um, and they were recruited, you know, um, MS patients who were recruited um, from across the, the globe. Um, they had to have um, a few things at baseline. They had to have um, some evidence of disease-associated um, or MS fatigue uh, because we were evaluating the impact um, of uh, Ponbori uh, compared to Obagio uh, on fatigue. Uh, but they are very representative of patients who you would find in clinical practice um, in most uh, neurology centers. Were there any key safety concerns and what were some of the key takeaways as far as how this research may help this uh, particular community? So for safety, I, I think the best data that we have, Neil, comes from the um, clinical trials, you know, where we actually randomized over a thousand patients to penesamod um, or to terraflunamide, um, Panvori or Obagio. And there we saw that Panavoria demonstrated a, a safe uh, and well-tolerated profile. Um, and that was over more than nine cumulative years of patient experience, um, starting back with phase two. The adverse event rates were similar to placebo in our phase two, and they were similar to Obagio or terraflunamide in the phase three trial. Um, also uh, to note, uh, Panavoria does not require genetic testing um, as some of the others in the class do to avoid um, certain side effects. And so most patients, and also most patients um, without specific heart conditions could take their first do dose at home uh, without the monitoring that is required, again, for some of the other uh, agents in this uh, class. Were all of the candidates of similar age and were they a mix of men and women? Well, you know, MS tends to affect uh, women more than men slightly, so we did have a, we did have slightly more uh, male, females, sorry, than males, uh, but that's actually kind of consistent with what we know about the epidemiology, and the, um, uh, and, and similarly, we had a, we had um, a range, we, we studied patients who were 18 to 55 years old, um, and there was a distribution so that most of the patients were in their, um, you know, we're in the range of their 30s um, and 40s. Was there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, so um, just about the Actrim's poster itself and why we pursued that um, to, to look for efficacy in early disease patients and, and why that was a particular interest for us. Um, and I think it's related to the very first question you asked me about what MS is because it's immune-mediated destruction of the one cell type in the body, which is essentially has no regenerative capacity, neurons, we, we wanted to look to, to see, you know, if a high efficacy therapy is started earlier, um, you know, will, will, there, will, there, will that be obvious um, in, in the result? Because the earlier that, that one starts in principle, a high efficacy therapy in MS, the better it's going to be for preserving neurons in the brain and spinal cord, and thus better for patients. So we looked at our phase three results uh, from Optimum, uh, which was a double-blind study uh, in which uh, Ponvori demonstrated superiority over Obagio or terraflunamide. Um, and we looked at the at, we looked um, at, at comparing comparing the results from that study which showed, you know, Panesamod re reduced the annualized relapse rate, or the ARR, by 30.5% 30, uh, 30 compared to Obagio, um, and also reduced something called um, QALS. So that's the combined unique active lesions. That's a way that we kind of quantitate how active is the disease in the brain by, by counting uh, MRI lesions. So in the phase three results, um, uh, Panesamod, Panvori actually uh, reduced um, the, the, these quals, these combined unique active lesions by 56% compared to Obagio. And we also looked at a change in fatigue uh, with a specific 
um, instrument that just looks at the type of fatigue that happens in the in MS. It's called the Fatigue Symptom and Impact Questionnaire, or um, FSIQ. Um, and there we saw that there was a, a significant a reduction in uh, MS fatigue in the punvoria treated folks compared to teraflunamide. So we took those data and then we asked, well, what about the patients who are who are early, either defined by a low amount of accumulated disability, um, or maybe they have not been treated before, or maybe we uh, look at patients who are both um, um, untreated, naive uh, patients, and also um, have low disability score. And when we looked at that, we saw that there was an even greater benefit of Ponvori over Obagio across those measures um, of amylized relapse rate, um, also the, the MRI lesions, the combined unique active lesions, and also on the FSIQ. So this tells us that there's even greater benefit in these early patients um, to treat with a um, to treat with Ponvori. Uh, compared to Obagio. Well, doctor, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more about Panvori. The website would be www.panvori.com to find um, more information about Panvori. All of the prescribing information um, is there. Uh, regardless of which region of the world uh, you are in, it'll take you to the right place. Great. And if I could just close by thanking you so much. Um, you know, we, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, Neil, um, and your audience. Uh, Jensen really has a rich pipeline to address many neurologic and neurodegenerative diseases and complex brain conditions. Um, and we really look forward to helping address brain health more broadly and grow our presence in neuroscience. So thank you for for helping us do that. It's the pleasure is ours. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host Neil Howard in conversation with Dr. Alicia Di Bernardo. She's joining us here from Janssen. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com healthprofessionalradio.